G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. Uh, didn't intend to make a video about trade news today, uh, so this one's a little bit spontaneous, but kind of just responding to uh, an interesting rumor that has just come across my screen, uh, well, various screens. It's kind of popping on social media at the moment. Clayton Oliver potentially making a move out of Melbourne this off season. Uh, it's probably one of the more bizarre trade rumors I've ever seen. I just can't get my head around it. Um, it there's always the bit of silly season that goes around this time of year, and, and I'm still trying to get my head around whether this is completely fabricated or not, but it seems a little bit too random. I'll be honest, when I first saw it, uh, I think it was on Instagram, I kind of ignored it. And then I saw another Instagram post and then I Googled Clayton Oliver and hit the news tab and there's been three articles about this very topic. So at the very least, we're gonna explore it and decide whether or not we think it's, well, there's anything to it. So first of all, I think the first story came from Toomey and Riley Beveridge. I've got a news.com.au article about Toomey and Beveridge talking about this topic uh, and Beveridge goes, on to say, one to watch over the next couple of weeks, clubs are weighing up now whether to make a move for Melbourne superstar Clayton Oliver. He points out that Oliver has a, a contract until the end of 2030, which I think he signed last year, if I'm not mistaken. He and Petrarca re-signed at the same time for like six and seven years or something like that. Um, they point out he's had a challenging year. Obviously, he had that hamstring injury. Played 15 out of a possible 25. Um, yeah, fair enough. One little side note here is that Toomey says that there's no external indications of interest in Oliver. So for whether it's true or not, this noise is seemingly coming from the Melbourne camp. And we'll elaborate that on a little bit further. But one other side note is that Oliver is one of only five players contracted into the next decade. So the end of 2030. The other ones are Harry Mackay, fair enough, common medalist. Josh Dacos, pretty good player. Nick Blakey, again, pretty good player. Uh, Fremantle's Brennan Cox. Wow. Okay. I'll just let you decide what you think of that one. I mean, good player, but... Not a great player, is he? That's bizarre. So uh, Toomey goes on to say it is unclear if he would be open to any move and there has been absolutely no indication that Melbourne would be willing to part with him either. Okay, so these guys are kind of really sitting on the fence with this and uh, I don't know if this is originally where this story came from. So in isolation, so far, doesn't seem anything to be concerned about. However, if you sort of uh, cross-reference that with the Instagram post I saw earlier, so this is from AFL Trade News, Delistings, Off-Season News, reviews i don't know if i forget the exact actual, actual name but it's a page that's been around for a while and for context this is not an official media outlet this is uh you know just a, a person like me if i'm not mistaken who started a facebook page and then made it an instagram page and just sort of puts out news and, and centralizes it and to be honest it is a great resource but i will contextualize and say this is not a reporter saying it but this post quotes tom morris apparently According to this Instagram post, which I'll put up on the screen, uh, says, per a report by Tom Morris. Okay, so that is an actual reporter. Melbourne are open to trading Clayton Oliver for the right price. Further, rival clubs are aware that Melbourne is trying to acquire a suite of draft picks for this year's draft. Okay, so that's actually, you know, whether or not it's true, that is actually a more direct suggestion that it's Melbourne that is open to trading Clayton Oliver. The part that doesn't make sense for me here is that uh, Melbourne is trying to require a suite of draft picks for this year's draft. Melbourne already have a suite of draft picks for this year's draft. They've already got Fremantle's pick five. Uh, what's their next pick? Pick 13. They've got at least four picks in the top 40, if not five. That's a pretty damn strong draft hand. Like, not many teams have two picks in the first round. North Melbourne might have two or three by the end of this. Uh, then there's GWS have a couple of first rounders. Like That's a pretty strong hand. They're already doing well. And, and this cannot possibly be a desire to accumulate enough draft picks to go for Harley Reid. Like what? We've already got Clayton Oliver. This sounds like a really weird sort of sidestep. But uh, yeah, anyway, the, the, the logic of trying to get more draft picks in this year's draft when Melbourne already have a good hand doesn't make any sense. If we were talking about Richmond trading their best player, I would probably still have some comments about it. But at the same time, that would make more sense to me than Melbourne. Anyway, we'll put a pin in that for a little bit and then uh, find another article here. This one is from worldwidersports.9.com.au and the, the headline by Krista Silva and Lachlan Harper says, Melbourne star's attitude is in question as rivals, rivals weigh up a stunning trade coup. So this then says, Melbourne star Clayton Oliver's attitude has reportedly been questioned by those within the club as rumours swirl around the futures, uh, future with the demons. This is very vague and lacks quotes, and it is very much 
almost deliberately vague to uh, to build a little bit of intrigue. His attitude has reportedly been questioned by those within the club. So somebody, some insider perhaps, is talking about how Clayton Oliver's attitude was bad this year. The wrench in his hamstring injury, uh, that's it. That is as, as deep as it goes. There's one more article here on 7 News. The headline of this is Melbourne respond to wild Clayton Oliver trade rumor. Um, so the, the way they structure this article is actually really clever because they make you read all the way to the end to find out that Melbourne haven't had anything to say about it. They said that he's a required player. But what 7 News does is quote uh, Oliver saying to them in an interview that he was really frustrated uh, with the way his injury went and um, he probably didn't handle it the way he should have. So I don't know if they're drawing a, a conclusion there and making a suggestion that his attitude sucked when he was injured and therefore like what's the connection other players in the club are now complaining about how bad his attitude was now he's gonna leave it says Melbourne confirmed to seven news that they were aware other clubs were circling Oliver but they insisted he was a required player and under a lengthy contract there has been no suggestion Oliver wants to move so this is a little bit uh, contradictory to what Callum Toomey said. Okay, so just cross-referencing that with the Toomey quote. So it, it, there's been no formal uh, approaches to Clayton Oliver, nor is there an indication of Melbourne being willing to get rid of him. Uh, they're simply saying that clubs are considering whether to make offers. So, you know, this, this all reads very suspiciously. I, I don't know if there's anything to it, but I suppose if for one second we just put a pin in that and humor this as a potential real situation. Does anyone think it's a good idea for Melbourne to willingly offload Clayton Oliver? Now, as far as I'm concerned, Melbourne are well and truly within the premiership window. And as far as I'm concerned as well, Clayton Oliver is still a top 10 player of the competition. They obviously have some level of agreement with that since they signed him onto a seven or eight year deal last year. I know Melbourne sort of uh, had, you know, a less than desirable outcome this year. They went out in straight sets for the second year in a row. But if there is any genuine contemplation of letting Clayton Oliver go for, you know, even a suite of draft picks, then that to me is mind boggling. Melbourne are not that far off the pace. Clayton Oliver is one of the more key integral parts of what Mel makes Melbourne a good side on their day. Sure, you could say they read the tea leaves, okay, a couple of failed finals appearances, maybe they're just looking to kickstart the rebuild and avoid exactly what happened at West Coast. But what I'll say as a West Coast fan, obviously the, in reference to the Tim Kelly deal, sure, like we could use some draft picks we could have used some draft picks through the 19 and 20 drafts and that would probably put us in a slightly better position than we are in now although I'd argue probably not that much better but I am still very glad that my side had a swing they went for an A-grade midfielder or perceived to be an A-grade midfielder at the time to try and prolong their premiership window this isn't exactly the same example this is a case of Melbourne deciding whether to retain a A-grade midfielder but if I'm a Melbourne fan if there is any chance that Melbourne willingly give over Clayton Oliver for even pick one Harley Reid and some change, I would be livid. I would be furious. And I think this is a, a potentially really dumb move. But that, like I said, there is no real suggestion. This is a very murky situation. There's no real suggestion that this is even a real thing. But plenty of times throughout the trade period, we see stupid stories come up and then they don't go away and then they become real things. So I'm uh, cautious about this one, but whether or not to believe it, but I just wanted to put my two cents in before this story develops at all. Uh, I am headed down to London tomorrow. So there will be a few days where I can't comment on stories as they evolve. And by the time I upload this, We've probably got three or four updates on Clayton Oliver anyway, but I just thought I'd give you my views. And as always, I welcome your comments and thoughts in the comments section below, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.